such an awesome God. So
You are the only one who will sit on the throne forever and ever, who will reign with righteousness, who will reign with love, who will reign with holiness. And Father, thank you for the privilege of just joining in nature and worshiping you. Yep. And Lord, we thank you for your presence here with us, that you look upon each one of us with just such love and such mercy, which is endless and abounding. And so we worship you here, Jesus, and we thank you that as we have stood and gazed at you, you have looked down upon us with such favor. And Lord, I ask that your glory would rest on these people, no matter where they go, that your glory would rest on us as lovers of Jesus. So again, we just say that you are the only one found worthy of all praise. Cause that to go deeper in our spirits, Lord. Especially in these uncertain times, take that deeper in us that you are the only one who's found worthy. You're the only one to be lifted high. You're the only one to be glorified. We put our faith and our trust in you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I don't need to record
Okay, sorry, I feel like I'm looking this way. I'm trying to be this way too. I'll shout. Actually, I just want to just share just a picture. Um, when, as I was sitting here, there was just a butterfly that came and rested on the branch right in front of me, and it was black and white with a red dot on it. I don't know Canadian butterflies. <laughs> but what, what kind of butterfly is that, Half? A monarch. Is it orange? No, it was a black and white oh. butterfly with a red dot. Oh, maybe a moth. <laughs> no, it was a butterfly. Anyway, I just, I just want to share this quickly. I just felt the Lord speak to me about his righteousness. And the black and the white. And the, the red representing the blood. And I just felt like the Lord really wanted to say to us today that it is only in his righteousness that we are saved. It's only in his righteousness. He speaks of our own acts of righteousness as human done. Actually, that's the word that's used in the Bible. And I just felt like I wanted to speak that over, over us today, that it's only the righteousness of Jesus Christ that makes us righteous. There's nothing we can do, really, nothing that we can do to make us righteous with God. And I just want to just say, Lord, right now, I just ask the blood of Jesus just to wash us clean right now in this place. Each one of us, whatever we've come from this week or the months that have passed, whatever's been going on emotionally or mentally or spiritually in your life, I feel like the, the Lord just says he's washing us as we've worshipped him, as we fixed our gaze on him this morning, that his blood speaks a better word over each one of us and washes us clean of every sin, of every thought, of everything that has exalted itself above his knowledge. So I just thank you, Jesus, again, for the cross, for your blood that was spilt, that, that your body that was broken for us this morning. We just say thank you. That is the righteousness of Jesus Christ that makes us worthy to be in your presence. And we just exalt you again in this place, Jesus, over our lives, over our individual lives. Thank you that we are washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I don't it all works. I don't want to shout. <laughs> well, it's lovely to see everybody. Great to see everybody after a few months. Yeah. And uh, let's get myself situated here. I have the unenviable task of sharing a message today. Yeah, just because it's a difficult day. Obviously, um, as we all know, the Hildebrand family is leaving our fellowship. And, uh, and so we want to release them. You know, that's really our aim today is to release them as a family and to thank them. And to really honor them as a family, um, not just Dolly and Harv, but Spencer and Jamie as well. So I'm just going to, what I really felt the Lord was impressing on me this week is to, you know, we, we're going to be honoring today and we're going to be releasing and blessing, right? And uh, so as, as a community of believers, we are always called to honor and bless one another and not to break each other down, right? And so I'm going to be just speaking a little bit about uh, a culture of honor and building up a culture of honor in, in amongst our congregation here. And uh, that was, I don't know if you remember, but uh, you probably won't remember, but uh, back in June 2019, uh, we, Inga and I shared about community. And uh, those were our first two sermons, in fact. <laughs> our first two messages were on community and how to do community together as best we can. And so part of that sermon was uh, actually from Romans 12, uh, 3 to 13, and I'm going to read that just now. And it really speaks about honoring one another and um, building each other up and not breaking each other down. 
And uh, so that was, those were the very two, very two sermons we spoke about were on community. Where do you want to be? Oh, just here. That's cool. Up here? Yeah. Feels awesome. Yeah, so we felt like really from the beginning of our time in, in uh, Canada that uh, the Lord was really draw, wanting to draw his community of believers, this community of believers, more and more closely together and to be one in body and one in spirit. And so uh, in those very first two sermons, we talked about a community of grace, extending grace to one another and building a culture of honor. And here's an interesting quote, right? Here's a good one. Every group develops a culture. We've developed a culture amongst us for years, a way of doing things together. And that happens either accidentally or deliberately. And so really a culture of honor doesn't really just happen by itself, you know, it doesn't just kind of like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we, we tend as, as humans to not necessarily honor each other and speak the best about one another. Um, and so what I'm saying is we need to actually be deliberate. We need to search the scriptures and find out what does the word actually say to us about a culture of honor. Um, and so I'm, I'm teaching on this today because we are called to honor each other and especially because we are here to honor our friends and compatriots who have served in this church for, for many years. And I'm not sort of, I'm not talking about lip service and, you know, offering praise to everybody. And <laughs> I'm not talking about a humanistic culture of honor, which lifts people up and, and uh, is, it's kind of humanistically focused or human focused. But I'm really talking about honoring one another because Christ has first honored us, um, you know, with his, his death on the cross and his uh, resurrection from the dead. And so honor is mentioned over 170 times in the Bible. And to honor someone is to value them, right? To value the gifts that God has given them. It means to credit them with worth. It means to give them prestige. And that's difficult sometimes. That's not always easy, you know. Um, not always an easy thing to do. And often, often it's just a mental choice. Here's a good scripture, Ephesians 5, 21. This is a beautiful, this is a very powerful scripture. If you don't, if you don't remember anything about this message today, remember this one, okay? <laughs> Submit yourselves to one another. Submit yourselves to one another out of reverence for Christ. And as I read the scripture, you know, it's, it's out of reverence to Christ that we submit ourselves to each other. You know, we have leaders, we have a leadership team in our church, we have pastors and we have leaders and, you know, they might seem like they're further up the totem pole, right? You know what a totem pole is, right? Have I got you guys' attention? They might seem like they're further up the totem pole, but really actually, you know, the scripture says, Ephesians 5.21, Submit yourselves to one another. It calls all of us and each one of us to submit ourselves to each other. And we do that by actually recognizing the gifts that we all have, right? All the gifts that God has placed in us, the good things that God has placed in us, right? And to actually build each other up and uh, kind of almost like, you know, highlight those good things. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to read. I don't want to ramble on. I think the scripture is going to speak for itself, right? It's more powerful than my words. So it's kind of like an upside down kingdom, this kingdom, right? Um, you know, we, you know, you know the, the typical triangle with, uh, the, you know, the, the totem pole that I'm talking about is the typical triangle this way around, right? But Jesus calls us to this kind of triangle, right? And the leaders are on the bottom and the leaders are serving upwards and building each other up and building up the whole congregation. And uh, yeah, so we as pastors, we're, serve, we're called to serve you. We're called to serve each other. And it's back to the scripture, you know. Submit yourselves to one another. The reality is that everyone on earth is actually submitted to somebody, right? And so that's kind of the, the culture that we're um, sort of emphasizing today is we're, we're all submitted to each other, actually, right? <laughs> None of us is better than anybody else. None of us is actually, uh, you know, further up the totem pole. We are called to serve each other. So I'm going to read from Romans 12. Yeah. There we go. That's my 
pigs. Romans 12, verse 3. I encourage you to pull out your Bible. Yeah. 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 Pull out your Bible app, yeah? <laughs> yeah. It says, yeah. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly up the totem pole, right? Then you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members. I was talking along the way here about each one of us having different gifts. We're all one body, but we have different gifts. And the members do not have all the same function. Some of us are the arms, some of us are the legs. Right? And so, though many are one are one body in Christ, we are one body, believe it or not, in Christ Jesus, and individually members one of another. We're having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them. You know, if it's, if it's prophesy in proportion to your faith, if service in your serving, the one who... Uh, and, in his teaching, the one who exhorts. In his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity. The one who leads with zeal. The one who acts, does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. And here's the kicker line. Here's the punchline scripture. Verse 9. It says, let your love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Here comes the honor word. Outdo one another in showing honor, right? Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. So there's my punchline. Is actually the word exhorts us to actually outdo each other, you know, in loving one another and actually outdoing each other. Kind of sounds like a competition, right? <laughs> outdoing each other in honor. And so that's what I just want to exhort to us, each our community here today, is to love one another with brotherly affection. To be genuine in our love, for our, for our love to actually be authentic, right? To not wear masks, to get rid of our offense, and to submit ourselves to one another. Yeah, yeah. You, you thought you were coming to an easy message, eh? A nice barbecue. <laughs> well, that's good. We're going to do that, eh? Yeah, so we are called to love each other, for our love to be genuine, Right? Verse 9, let your love be genuine. Verse 10, love one another with brotherly affection or sisterly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. And so we're here to show honor today, again. But it's really a lifestyle, hey? We don't do it just like on special occasions like this. We're called to a lifestyle of submitting to one another. We're called to a lifestyle of loving one another, right? Despite our differences, despite our our hurts, despite our offenses. Christ calls us to a higher standard. And so here's another passage you can turn to. is 1 Corinthians 12. All right, let me get there. 1 Corinthians 12, 14 to 25. This again speaks about the different parts of the body. Okay. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. So Paul's saying here that every part of the body is, there's no part of the body that's less, right? Lesser than any other part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? You know, if we just had eyes, how would we hear? How would we hear the Spirit of God? If the whole body were an ear, where would, the, the, where, where, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. I'm going to skip to verse 23 here, 22. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, right? That means we need all of them. 
And in fact, they might even be more important just because they're missing. And our indispens unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor. This is the honor part. Giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. And so in our submitting to one another, in our Ephesians 5.21 passage, right, submitting ourselves to one another, we show care for one another. In our honoring one another, we show love and care for each other. So a quick little word study on, on honor. Proverbs 22.4. The reward for humility. Sometimes honoring one another takes humility, right? It takes me to say to myself, I use me as an example, right? Uh, it, takes me to, uh, it takes me to say to myself, I prefer the other person. Even if I think that they've offended me, even I think they've, they're wrong, sometimes it takes me to be humble and say to myself, well, actually I prefer them. I honor them and I love them. Proverbs 22, 4, talking about humility. It says, the reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life, right? So we humble ourselves. God actually bestows on us honor. You know, we don't get honor necessarily from, from each other all the time. We actually get it from God. Here's another Proverbs scripture. 29, 3, one's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. It's a beautiful scripture. It's powerful stuff. And so what are, I'm going to end pretty shortly because we want to get to prayers and releasing and blessing. And we want to show honor, right? Not just show it, but have it in our hearts actually, right? And so what are the practical ways that we can demonstrate honor with one another? So here are some of the practical ways. There are many ways. I'm only gonna I'm only gonna mention three. All right, I'm gonna keep it short. Here's I'm, I'm gonna speak mostly from the scripture. Let the scripture speak for itself. Make allowances for one's faults. Right. And so here's the scripture, Colossians three twelve to thirteen. If you want to turn there, you're very welcome to. I don't see any Bibles, people. I need some Bibles out. <laughs> yeah, we've had three months off. Eh? <laughs> Colossians 3, 12 to 13, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, right? God has chosen each one of you. I didn't choose God. God chose me first, right? You must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, mercy for one another. Clothe yourself. Put on a garment of mercy. Put on a garment of love for each other. It carries on and says, put on a uh, clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, okay? Humility, gentleness, and patience, and make allowance for one's, one another's faults, and forgive one another. Forgive those who have offended you, right? Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. So that was my first one. Make allowances for another's faults. The second one, be first and be quick to apologize. I've learned that in my own marriage. It really helps. <laughs> Be quick to apologize, you know. I'm making light of it, but this is, you know, this is maybe the tough stuff that, you know, it's like, uh, it's not so easy always to do, right? No one wants to be the first one to apologize. When we're in a confrontational conflict, we want the other person to go first, right? Who can identify with that? Yeah, okay, yeah, there we go. This principle is all about the leader going first. Actually, the leaders actually showing love and honor towards each other. Leaders sometimes set the tone in the organization. They set the pace. People repeat what they see their senior leaders do. And if a senior leader is the one who then, who when they, when, when they blow it says, hey, I'm sorry I blew it. Please forgive me. Now it sets the culture of the organization or the, or the community or the church, you know, whatever it is. And here's, a, here's a, a good way to show honor as well, is stop dishonoring people on social media, right? 
I, I, it's kind of a, it's kind of I, when I first read this, I thought, wow, you know, this is actually this guy's moving with the times. You know, we're so uh, we're so into our social media nowadays, but this is kind of a new. It's a new space for some of us. For a lot of us, it's not a new space. But maybe because it's a new space, we don't actually think about this so hard. You know, are we dishonoring anybody with our social media, with our with our opinions? You know, and how many likes we get on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever it may be. You know, so don't get twisted up in conversations on social media which are dishonoring. You know, there's a lot out there which there's a lot of dishonoring of people out there. And so I just want to exhort you. You know, so many Christians are on social media. And they have arguments, you know, arguments on social media about stuff. You're ruining your witness, right? By being wrangling in words over social media, you know? If you're a leader in the church or if you're just someone that follows Jesus, stop angling with words and stop arguing and dishonoring people on social media. And so I think we want to go now into a time of prayer and blessing. Um, how are we going to do this, love? You're going to... Yeah. So honor one another. Submit yourselves to Christ and love one another. So we just want to have just a time of praying for these guys. And I actually would like maybe just Dolly and Hoff to share a little bit. Um, just what God's doing. Um, that I can do with joy. You know, it was back in probably about 1994. That's where we, we moved out of a, a church that was here locally. And uh, God was tugging on our heart uh, because we were introduced to the vineyard. There was no vineyard, uh, well, there was no vineyard in, in Canada at that time, or at least not in Manitoba. And uh, we didn't even know what a vineyard was. And, uh, but we did know what Charismatic was, and we did know what Pentecostal was. We were involved in a Pentecostal church for a little bit. But in our transition, we got into a Bible study group, and we started understanding the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, that was so pivotal in our life. Because when you think of it, if you don't believe in people speaking words into your life, like in a prophetic way, then how do you find direction from God in your life? And uh, we were taught that basically you would get direction from God for your life through the scriptures. As you're reading, the Lord will highlight something to you. And that's exactly true. That does happen. And another way is uh, just through circumstance. If something happens, uh, then uh, God is directing you into a path, and that's the Word of God speaking to you. And that's true, too. But completely putting aside the fact that other people can speak into your lives. That was a real change in my heart and in my thinking and in my understanding of how God is going to be able to direct us. So it was at that point that we started actively listening to God and being taught more and more about that and what that looks like in our, our life. And uh, it, it was still about um, 2000 or so, uh, 2001, that's when we got involved with the vineyard in Brandon. And that's when the prophetic words started flowing into our lives. I could, I could go quite into a lot of story uh, regarding the amount of prophecies and words and directions that have been given to us. But there's just a couple that I'll focus on. And the first one is so far out there that it's end times type of revelation. I don't know how many times. This will pass. I don't know how many times it is that we've got a word regarding us living in an area of Goshen. If you understand Goshen, that is uh, uh, back in the days of the children of Israel when they were in captivity yeah. in Egypt. And uh, as Mo uh, they were being dragged out into the wilderness, they were in an area. And that area was an area of Goshen, which was supernatural provision by the Lord, supernatural protection from the Lord. 
There's a portion of the plagues that the children of Israel had to go through. And there's a portion that they did not. They were just completely, there would be, I don't know which one it was. It wasn't the locusts, I don't think, but it could have been. That there was a plague that was completely miles away, but where they were, it was not. We've had that, that word for us. And to us, that has got to be some kind of an end times thing that is coming. That has very little to do with what we're doing today. It, it may have a lot to do. We, we don't know. We don't, because of COVID-19 and how the world, the entire world got turned upside down in days, gives me a very, very strong understanding now of what can be coming and how just like that, we can see the rising of the Antichrist coming. It can be that quickly. I've never said that until after COVID-19. It's always been the Lord is so slow in everything that he does. And I think most people here that have had a prophetic word will be able to relate to that. You get something and then it could be years later that it happens. Well, that's one of the words that we've got. Um, because I don't want to talk like really, really long. I'm going to skip way up to the most present word uh, that we got. Uh, because the Lord has been stirring in our hearts now for all these years that we have been driving through Boise of Ink into Brandon, the Lord has been in our hearts churning about what we can do here locally. Uh -huh. But we do know that God called us to the vineyard in Brandon. Uh, the worship as Dolly leads was rejected here. In the church that we were going to, that was rejected. It was a sit down, stand up type of worship where you sing two hymns, sit down. And uh, this, her, her leading from the keyboard was, was foreign concept back in the 90s. And also uh, flowing from one song to the next to the next and creating a, an atmosphere where the Lord can move and touch in our hearts. So the vineyard has been an extreme means for Dolly to be able to learn and practice and be uh, to, to move forward in that type of a, a calling. So we thank the vineyard so much for that. And uh, um, it was a couple months ago that we were talking with Ed and Lynn about our hearts and, and how we're, we're feeling that the Lord is calling us back to Boise of Ain. And we don't know what the timing is, but we're, we're feeling that he's calling us back to Boise of Ain. And Lynn said pretty quickly, well, make sure that you have a very strong prophetic word from somebody from way out, wherever, somebody that has no idea of what's going on in your life. And, and just, just pray, pray to the Lord for a word like that and um, just be patient for it. And it happened. It, it wasn't a couple weeks later that we got a, uh, a text from a, uh, a girl that we went to Bible school with, and we haven't seen her in 30 years. But we had a connection. I was in a singing group with her in Bible school, but uh, the Lord gave her a, uh, a dream, and uh, she texted it out to us. And uh, basically it said, I see you and Dolly in a, a, a black house with, uh, with, with metal windows. And that black caught my attention right away. I was so opposed to the black shingles on this house because I'd always been taught black and heat. You just, it's so counterproductive. Your, your shingles aren't gonna last. Well, if you look on the other side of the house, the house is completely vented. And the guy that uh, I talked to about the shingles said that, you know what, if you vent it, those black ones, you will get 30 years out of those shingles. So we got black shingles. And in her vision or in her dream, she sees this black in a house. And it was covered in the area with gardens. This, this place has multiple gardens around it. And then beyond, they, she saw a, a church. 
Now, we don't know if that means that we're supposed to build something here. We don't know that. But what we do know, it suggests a house church. Yeah. Yeah. And that we really believe is the way the Lord is, is taking us. Now with the whole COVID-19 thing, it, uh, it has been house church here as normal. We've continued to worship week after week after week, even if we're being recorded or not being recorded, and realize that this truly is something that the Lord is calling us into. That is where we're at right now. I could read the, the dream specifically. And just to clarify, both Harv and I were like, nah, you don't really have to have someone come up to you that's a total stranger and say something. Do you? Do you really have to? Because Lynn was like, you have to. Well, you guys all know that. Do you have to? But, brand on her for brand. Yeah, anyway, so we yeah. said, okay, then, Lord, you give us that dream. Uh, because, oh, I lost it here. Um, that, or that person. Oh, you give us that person. Yeah. Uh, because, so we went down to Texas just before COVID hit, and then we stopped at uh, IHOP, and there was no prayer rooms. There was no our prophetic rooms open. They'd closed them. And we went, oh no, that's where we're, we're going to get our word. <laughs> and we're like, oh no. So, yeah, we planned it all out. That's where we're going to get our word. Then we went to uh, uh, the YWAM base there where Stephanie Reimer is. Most of you know her. And, and we support her and love her. She's one of our daughters. And so we told her, we're so sad that the prayer, uh, the prophetic rooms are closed. She goes, you don't need those. And within 10 minutes, she had about six, seven people gathered around us praying. And mm -hmm. they all consistently got things like season of change. There's a new path, things like that. And we went, yeah, that's nice, but no, I, it's not it. So anyways, out, like Harv said, out of the blue, I get this message from this girl who, oh, my only connection with her at this point is social media. Like, oh, hi, nice grandchild and things like that, or nice whatever. So she t messages me, not hello, how are you? I haven't talked with you in a long time, nothing. I had a dream last night and you were in it. You and Harv had this huge, gorgeous farmhouse, black with metal windows and acres of patios and gardens and right beside was this big church which you were the pastor of, a very upbeat church, hundreds of people there and we were there visiting. And then she says, I'm not sure if this has meaning or it's prophetic. That's kind of funny. I didn't even know she was walking in the spirit, but that was pretty cool. <laughs> So we went, okay. So I, I sent that to Lynn. I go, there you go. She goes, well, there you have it. <laughs> We're always so excited and grateful when we have friends that do walk in things of the spirit. There are people that we went to Bible school with that, and of one of my best friends, we were down in Mexico with him this winter. And uh, loves the Lord, but uh, extravagant, no. Prophetic, no. Uh, just like- Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's exciting to see some of those uh, friends that we've had from the past starting to and continuing to walk in the same prophetic stuff as as we do. So, hey. okay, let's get you guys up here. So now you know there were probably murmurs and rumblings that you knew this was happening. Nancy, and, uh, Donna is going to be taking over my position as uh, as a treasurer. And uh, she will be wonderful. So I'm just going to, unfortunately, um, Tony and Linda and Ed and Lynn and um, Jamie and Dave Taggart, who are our other leaders, leaders, could not be here today because of illness and not being able to be in groups. So I've asked uh, Trevor and um, John, who are on the board, and their wives, uh, Thea and Mel, to come up and just come help us pray. And then Brenda and Richard um, to come up and just come lay hands on these guys. Yeah, let's just um, come around them, guys. Just come around them on each side. Let's get you in the middle. And then, uh, yeah, John's going to start. I'm going to say something first. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I just want to, you know, I want to acknowledge, like, uh, that needs to be said, the, the, the body of work that, that this family has brought to, to the Brandon Vineyard at, at so many levels. You just have to understand this, eh? At the elder level, at the board level, at the worship ministry level, 
and at the congregational level, this is a huge body of work that has to be acknowledged. I, I have to say that right now. I refer to this family, uh, uh, Harvey, Dolly, Ariel, uh, um, Spencer, Jamie, Nancy, right? I, 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 this just has to be said so that you guys understand this. This is, this is really big, and, it's, and, and they, they've done so much for this church. And I'm going to jump ahead again and say, like, I have some, some personal, like, memories of this family that I, I, I wanted to say, like, because they had impacted my family as well. And, and the one that sticks to mind, a couple of them really is, is like I'm, I'm my granddaughter, Asia, would come to church as a toddler. And she'd go forward for, uh, get ready for child, children's ministry. And just as they would turn around, in, in my heart, I, I could see it. She would turn and Dolly would, 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 would go towards her and they'd have like a five second conversation. And then he, he would hug her and she would go off to children's ministry. And that, and that memory just sticks in my, in my, in my mind today. Um, and, uh, and my oldest son, Matthew, would blow into church and he'd want to uh he'd go right to the right to the stage because he had to tell jamie and 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 spencer and harvey if the wheat kings won or if he was if he won at uh floor hockey he, he had to tell them and they always would stop what they're doing and listen and, and that sticks into my mind as well <laughs> right so and 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 i don't know why but the the, mem the memory i have of harvey right now is when they visited the Holy Land, we had a, we saw a slideshow, mm -hmm. and he was in a like a, an old time garment, a Hebrew garment, and he was standing in an, I don't know a lake, Jordan sea, River. the Jordan yeah. River, and that and that stuck in my mind, and, and which brings me to my last point before we start praying is is the verse that came into my mind this morning was was Joshua 14, okay, the division of the land to Caleb by Moses, and and Moses had turned to Caleb and said that I give you this land that you have stepped on as an inheritance to you and your family because you have loved God wholeheartedly, right? And, and so I, I, need, I need to say those two things. I didn't mean to steal the show here, but it, just, it was just in my mind. Like, I wanted to say it and thank you. The body of work is enormous. And I'm sure that, and, I, and we're gonna pray and bless them. We're gonna acknowledge God and acknowledge their work and, and bless them on their future endeavors. Anybody wanna, anybody wanna say something? <coughs> Start praying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I certainly echo what John's uh, talking about here. We all do. Um, I do, in terms of praying, yeah, well, definitely one of the things that came to, to, to me while I was thinking about this and, and looking on this, and it was the word beauty of the Lord. And I felt that it was the beauty of the Lord is going to shine through you guys in this community. I know as the Brandon Vineyard, we've been praying for Brandon in the West Man region for so long, right? We, we're West Tuesday nights. <laughs> and, you know, during worship, I did see, you know, the that vision of the vine dresser taking off a piece of that vine and planting it and it flourishing. And so I just really felt that the beauty of the Lord is going to flow through you guys and that the Lord's going to bless you in that. And I just feel strongly that, uh, that even though you're not part of our community in Bremen, you're part of the, the whole vineyard, you're part of that branch that we've talked about. We're still part of it. You, exactly, you're still part of our community, and you're, you're not that far away, so that's what I wanted to say. I want to add something to that, and what John, you have said, John, because I know Harv, when we said, okay, now is the time, but Harv was, but we've been praying for revival for Brandon for so many years, and, and, and we wanted to be a part of that because they need us, and I said, Oh no, that's where you're wrong. You know what, the church has been equipped so well that each one of you guys will do this. When revival hits, you don't need Harv and Dolly and our family. You guys got this, like it's it's there. So we, we need to spread out, right? Because I said to Harv, Boys of A needs people. Because mm -hmm. revival is hitting here. Yep. So. I was listening to a video last night by um, Chris Bolton from uh, Bethel in um, California and he said that because of COVID that we were going to have houses of prayer and worship rise up out of it Amen. and it's going to be smaller groups yeah. and so Lord I just pray for Dolly and Harv yeah. and their family and Lord I just ask that you would just bless them bless them Lord in the land that they are in Lord Jesus and I pray Lord that uh but boys and men, that the town, Lord, would be saved. Lord, because that's your heart in the Westman area. Lord, let them be a, a light, Lord Jesus, in this area. 
and let them go out from here, Lord Jesus, and just to be a, a blessing to everyone that they talk to, encounter, come across, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you would just give them a, a gift of healing. Yeah. Also, Lord, would land in this place. Lord, just release it. Open the heavens, God, that you would pour out and release, Lord, everything, God, that they need. Equip them, Father, with your love, your joy, your peace, and hospitality, Lord Jesus. And I keep getting the word balance a couple of times as we are driving out too. Lord, give them balance. Just pray that in Jesus' name. Um, so there was a prophetic word when you were a young man, a little boy, that said that revival will come from your drumsticks. And we believe that. Come we watch you grow and partner, and we will see fruit from what you love. And so I just want to acknowledge that promise, that the promises that have been spoken over you, they're not void. They will do greater and better things than we could ever ask or imagine, because you're our son, and we've loved you as such. So then this is for all of you. Um, I did steal it from a really wise man once that spoke this. So may God go before you to lead you. God go behind you to protect you. God go beneath you to support you. God go beside you to befriend you. Do not be afraid. And may the blessing of the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you. Do not be afraid. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Yeah, I just want to echo what Mel said that really Robert and I have felt in this whole COVID time that God is saying we are a house church first. We, we are actually a house of prayer first. And, and we know through Ed and Lynn and, and we are a very odd vineyard actually. Yeah. <laughs> We've actually been labeled that in Vineyard Canada as an oddity. It's because we, we, we do things slightly differently, I think, to... <laughs> And I just think God is saying, you, you are, you are a house of prayer first, a house of prayer for the nations. My church will be called a house of prayer for the nations. And I just want to declare that over you. And I saw as you guys were worshiping too, like the church, like just flowing over, like it was just flowing over and you just, it's, it's out of the box. It's out of the walls. And, and I've seen that even in, in our vineyard church on Rasa, that the walls are coming down. And, and God is doing a new thing, and we cannot fight it. And, and, and this is what he's extending. He, the, the ten pegs are being extended way beyond the borders of Brandon. And we're so blessed, and we're so thankful for your um, willingness and your answer to God. Just say, yes, Lord, we'll do it. Even though it's uncomfortable, even it stretches us, it's it's not what we've known, but it's like, it's exciting. It's I feel an excitement, and I know we all do, sadness, but excitement yeah. um, to see what God is going to do here in Boise Bain and the surrounding areas. And I just felt about the word balance. And as I laid my hands on you two sisters, I felt that you two, <laughs> it's like you've got this weird mixture between Martha and Mary. And, you keep on, and, and what's funny is, like I said, who's Martha and who's Mary? And he said, they're both Martha and Mary. And, and I just felt that's the balance that God is saying that actually, yeah, you know, it's like God has actually made you a Mary. Um, um, Dolly, where you are the misorganized and you've got it all laid out, you know, you've got the pla the prophetic word waiting in Kansas City, <laughs> but the Lord, but the Lord is saying, no, I've actually taught you to be a Mary and to, to, to sit before an audience of one. And, and I just see that's the balance that's going to make this work. Whatever God is doing here is that you're going to know when to be Martha and you're going to know when to be Mary. And it's that moving back and forth between the that place all of you as a as a group as a team you know so just bless you bless you in that richard brenda i know this is very hard for for you guys you want to pray rich <laughs> she's, that's okay. she can't. She, she's, she's probably prayed a lot that's okay rich should we do that
Lord Jesus, thank you that you are here today. Thank you for all these years we've had with our Dolly and, and your children with us, and also Nancy and Rick for this last period of time. What a blessing it has been. And I just pray your blessing over them as they move forward into this area, that you would guide and direct them just be there every step of the way and that they would always look to you for the direction that you so lovingly give us and you are always right in everything thank you for your part in this Lord Jesus that you know what's best and we just commit this all to you we thank you for all of it in the name of Jesus amen, amen. Psalm 16 it is. <laughs> He's in salt. <laughs> and we are going to barbecue today sometime, okay? Just letting you know. Okay, Psalm 16. I just felt to pray that for you guys as you really stepping into this new season. I say to the, preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge i say to the lord you are my lord i have no good apart from you as for the saints in the land they are the excellent excellent ones in whom is all my delight the sorrows of those who run after another god shall multiply they drink offerings of blood i will not i will not pour out or take their names on my lips the lord is my chosen portion and my cup you hold my lot the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night. Also, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad. My whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to shell. Or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. And in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So we bless you with Psalm 16. And the boundary lines have fallen for you in good places. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause and the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say grace and then we've done yeah. that too. Absolutely. <laughs>